Hi everyone. Uh, so today we are starting our new series called Behind the Covers and um, I'm going to give you a little bit of insight to some of my favorite covers that I've worked on as a professional makeup artist. I've uh, had you know the privilege and honor to be a part of many incredible photo shoots and you know creating these images and characters and uh, with the best teams in the world and I'm going to take you behind the scenes a little bit. Today I'm showing you our Taylor Swift cover of Vogue magazine from February 2012. I remember vividly that we were working in Chelsea doing this cover. Tawny Goodman was the editor. She did most of the covers back then. Mario Testino was the photographer and the wonderful Orbe was doing hair. I've never met anyone more funny than Orbe and or more elegant than Orbe. Fun fact. We shot this cover on the eve of her 22nd birthday. So she was, you know, ending 21, entering 22. This was Taylor's kind of like big transition from country into pop. And that was a big deal. And I think that that, you know, transition in her personal life and her, her career really sort of also sparked that we wanted to make this uh, cover really kind of feel like this is the new Taylor. The brilliant Tawny had this idea that we should sort of channel a combination of, you know, Jean Shrimpton, Penelope Tree, all of those kind of iconic women from the 60s and 70s. But Tawny, I feel like always was the guiding light in any of these cover shoots. She always had a brilliant idea up her sleeve. I remember Orbe, he cut Taylor's bangs for this. And, um, you know, that was obviously risky because what if she didn't like it? So I gave her a lot of contour, I would say, and I changed the placement a little bit. I had it a little further down to make her cheekbones appear even bigger. A little bit of a nod to the 60s and, you know, the black and white images where you just see this these incredible cheekbones. People were used to seeing Taylor Swift with the red lip because actually I was the first person to do a red lip on her. And I remember we did it for Allure magazine. She had never worn a red lip. And I remember her mom saying, Taylor doesn't do red. And I was like, oh, come on, Taylor is beautiful and Taylor can wear anything. So I did a red lip on her and I felt really like good about it because after that she was never seen without a red lip. So that was pretty cool. You know, and it's really fun to create these characters that then end up, um, kind of carrying over into the artist's life later, you know, and that they liked how they looked and they they want to continue with this image of themselves. So that feels really good. I wonder if you want to recreate this look. If I were to use my products today, I would use um, from iPods Les Nuits. I would use Noir and make it sort of like a smudgy black liner and just kind of rim the eyes. And it doesn't matter if it's you know, perfect, but it was more of a smudgy rock and roll feeling. And then I roomed the tear line with black liner and, you know, I would use I Love You mascara. And really it was about the skin feeling super kind of un makeup y So if I was doing this today, I would use Face Trace and Biscuit. And um, I shaded her nose. I gave her little freckles. And then on her lips, I would suggest using lip suede, a little bit of the fuchsia shade, like a stain, or I could use any of the nude shades and make them just add a little bit of the mold wine to the end. And you sort of get this pinky, fleshy feeling. Taylor, I wanna wish you the best of luck for your, I've lost track of how many nominations and wins and everything else, but it doesn't seem like you need any well wishes because you've got it and you're incredible and um, look forward to everything else that you're gonna do. So good luck and we'll be rooting for you. Bye everyone, thanks for watching.